Okay, so I hope you had a good night. You heard about cool stuff like the brain and something with the virus and the cancer and all that cool shit. So what I work on is is poop. <laughs> like actually like actual human feces. I work on I work on shit. <laughs> come on, a round of applause, please. Just just one come on, yeah, there you go, there you go. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I knew there was some German in the house. There you go. I know you guys have a little soft spot for that. Good. Okay, settle down, settle down. It's not actually the poop itself that I'm necessarily interested in. It's something within it that sort of tickles my fancy. So if people here are interested to find out more about poop, I really recommend Googling it, maybe in a private session, because you know, you don't want any ads coming up later. But basically it's like 75% water, and 25% solid bits, out of which 30% are actually bacteria. And there you get into the part that actually sort of interests me. I study bacteria. And I brought a couple with me. I wanted to bring the actual little critters. They're very, very tiny microscopic, you can't actually see them, but people in the lab told me I'm not allowed to take them out. And you will soon see exactly why. So I've got a couple as well, just pass them around to people that I hope can read properly. You can have one. And uh, you guys can have one. I'll just step down here. There you go. You guys can have one. And anyone else? What you 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 want one? There you go. Yeah, that's my that's my business card. So if you if you sort of manage to to read them, if you just sort of shout out the name of them, I'll tell you what I just gave you. So who wants to start? Staphylococcus aureus. That's going to be necrotizing fasciitis. That's a nasty infection, goes under your skin, your skin falls off, and you're pretty fucked. Next, please. Vibrio cholera. Sorry? Vibrio Oh, Vibrio cholera. That's the one that gives you cholera, in which you basically shit everything you've ever had inside you out, and then you die. Next, please. Yersinia pestis. Yersinia pestis. That's the guy that caused the Black Plague. 25 million dead in the 14th century, that's about... 50% of the population that lived in Europe. Not a good guy. There's one more, one more somewhere. Who's got the last one? Oh, come on, Tupac, you know that one. You got that one. You got that one? Tupac, that's syphilis, my friend. If you don't have it, come find me afterwards. I'll make sure you get it. Okay, so obviously, so a lot of people here think of some of these guys when they think of bacteria. This is why we sort of wash our hands a lot. This is why we have sanitation. We have all these sort of nasty disinfectant things that we put on our hands, all that stuff. is to make sure that none of these guys get on us. Well, actually, that's not really going to work because we're covered in them. They're everywhere. They're on your skin, they're in your mouth, they're in your gut, they're in your lungs. They're absolutely everywhere. For every one cell you have in your body, there's 10 other bacterial cells living somewhere around. The bacteria that live in your gut, they weigh about three kilos. That's twice as much as an average human brain. It's probably three times as much as some of the brains out here. That is a lot of biomass, my friends. So I obviously, I focus, since I, I focus on poop, I focus on the bacteria that live in the human gut. And they're, they're very interesting. I'm not going to bore you with the details of how we measure them and what kind of stuff we do with them. I'm going to tell you some of the facts we know about them, and then I'm going to tell you how they're sort of important for our health, and why we actually want them. And once I'm done with that, I'm going to leave you on a sad note and tell you why they're probably going to kill all of us in the end. But, you know, that's how you want to end a nice drunken evening, on a really sad note. Okay, so, basically we have a way of measuring them. I won't bore you with how, but we can take the poop, look at it and say you have 30% bacteria A, 20% bacteria B, and so on. We can tell you sort of what is in you, right? And based on that, we can do some statistics and look at things and tell you things. So one thing we can tell you is that you're a little poop flake. It's like a snowflake, but brown. <laughs> Which means you are rather surprisingly individual. And if we sample you today, and we sample you a week from now, and we sample you a year from now, we're going to be able to tell that it's exactly you that we sample at each time point. Because your microbiota, the little critters that live in your gut, are surprisingly stable. So we think that is really rather fun. The NSA thinks that is rather fun, but don't tell them. Don't tell them I told you, basically. Because they, they already know. Okay, so that's one cool thing that we know about the, the microbiota. Another thing that we know is that 
If you look at a broader picture of them, they fall within three different categories. We call these antrotypes. Uh, and these we think are relevant to sort of how you react to different things, how healthy you're going to be, and how you react to some drugs and stuff like that, and how your metabolism generally works. We have some evidence that one of these antrotypes is specific to people that are vegetarians, for example, uh, though it's not necessarily definite. And so there's a lot of work going on in this direction. Most of the work we've done is sort of things that are related to, disease, to diseases. So we look at things like obesity. We've heard about this like just now for quite a while. Okay, no one. Um, <laughs> so there's been a couple of really interesting studies done on, on obesity. Obviously in mice, because we can't really fuck with people that much. So you take sterile mice, mice which are grown in really sterile conditions, they have no microbes, none whatsoever. They're, they're very sad, no friends. And you implant them with microbes coming from twins, which, have, which are discordant in obesity, means one of the twins is slim, the other twin is not so slim, I eat it properly fat. And you take these microbes and I put them into mice, which are exactly the same, they're just sterile. And you can see that the mice, as they grow and develop, the mouse that got the fat microbes that becomes fat, and the one about the slim one remains slim. Which I think is pretty cool. And if you don't think it's cool, then you're out of your mind. So this is, this is one of the few things that sort of we've, we've managed to correlate things to. Obesity and then there's Crohn's disease. This is the part where you'll be happy that I have no slides. And even though you've been staring at my sort of rather <laughs> ugly face for a while, at least you don't get to see inflamed colons. So you know, be happy. Um, so yeah, Crohn's disease, nasty little bugger. Basically, inflamed colons everywhere, a lot of bleeding. People that have it, not very happy. Turns out, they are lacking a lot of the diversity that you normally get in the gut. In the gut, I think you get about 100 trillion microbes, 100 trillion cells, which are about more than 1,000 species. And Crohn's patients have very few species, and they're, they're basically the same numbers, but the diversity is different which means that they're a lot more unstable to different things. And I think really we think that sort of correlates to the inflammation. Okay, so I hope I've convinced you that microbes are important for you and that they're lovely things. <laughs> Is that, oh, that's pink words. Oh, that's lovely. Okay, so now that, now that we have pink within everyone's eyes, I can tell you why microbes are probably going to kill us. So remember that stuff I was talking about uh, that someone had before? The Staphylococcus aureus that makes your skin fall off? Well, that guy, the, way, the reason for which people don't get that that much and people don't get the bubonic plague that much and all the other nasty things is because we have antibiotics. Whenever we get one of these, we give you some antibiotics and they die and they're pretty much fine. So what's been happening recently is that, well, by recently I mean the past 40 years or so, is we've been majorly overusing antibiotics. Majorly. We give them to all of our cattle just to keep them nice and peppy. We give them to our pigs. We basically give them to everything that we actually ever eat. And then we also give them to people randomly. I come from a rather shitty Eastern European country. I'm not going to say which one. Uh, you know, libel and stuff. But uh, there you can just get antibiotics over the counter. And everyone takes them whenever they feel a bit under the weather. And there's a lot of overprescription antibiotics everywhere. And the shitty thing with antibiotics is that bacteria figure out a way to defend themselves against it and pass it to their friends. They're like, ooh, here, try this plasmid. Don't, don't, don't worry about plasmid bits, but you know, plasmids. They basically figure it out and they give it around to different people, to all the different bacteria that sort of pass through your gut. Which means slowly but surely, all the bacteria around are starting to be immune to the antibiotics that we actually have. Which means one day soon, there's going to be that one staph infection which is not going to respond to any antibiotics. And then, we're screwed. And on that happy note, I wish you a lovely evening.